The goal here is just to take care of a problem I've had in my shop for a long time, which is I don't have a great setup for cutting metal. It's kind of always been taking a really cheap Harbor Freight stand and putting some kind of metal cutting saw on top of it and then setting up a couple of rollers just based on what I'm cutting and uh, getting the rollers and the stand and everything at the same height and making everything level has just been a huge pain. So I'm going to try and make a miter stand, um, kind of a set of benches, uh, but with a little bit of a twist on it. The biggest problem with most miter saw benches is that you need to leave your bench open so that you can put a piece of material on it. You can't really set anything permanent on the bench itself because uh, that would inhibit you using your saw. So what I've done is kind of come up with a design that allows you to use the front of the bench to attach a roller system. And using that roller system, it can either be there all the time or it can just be down when you're not using it. And then you can quickly set up the rollers if you need to use them. That's part of the problem I have with my wood miter saw benches. Um, it's a very traditional like miter saw bench that you see on YouTube everywhere else. And um, I've kind of just started hating that thing. It was, we do projects in the back of the shop, like make solid service countertops or something like that. And um, I'll have all kinds of stuff spread out on those benches because they're nice benches and then I want to go and cut a board and now all of a sudden I have to move a thousand things just to cut one board on that miter saw. So if this ends up working I'll probably try and uh, I don't know, update that wood miter saw bench to have the same design. Right here I'm working on the feet for the bench and uh, everything in this shop or at least I try and make everything in the shop as portable as I can so most everything in there has got some kind of set of wheels on it. And, this bench is going to end up being pretty narrow because it's uh, in front of the big roll-up garage door, and I like to keep that space as uh, clear as possible. So the bench, when it's on the wheel, is going to be probably a little tippier than I'd like, but I do put these uh, leveling bolts in it, and um, they're to the outside, so when it's down on its leveling feet, it should be really stable. I believe the bolts I put in there are three-quarter um, can't quite read that tap right there, and I forget now. We actually did this project quite a while ago, so it's um, it's been just getting the video editing and stuff done on it. That's taken a long time. Most of this stuff is just um, purchased off McMaster Car, and then put together here in the shop to make this bench. Here I'm just welding on um, some nuts to use to uh, level out the bench, and I really like using those Milwaukee impacts to uh, run the bolts up and down. It's super quick to level out a bench. I was really struggling to find a track to use for the front of the bench, but then I found this really cool stuff off your master car. It's aluminum like extrusion and it's super stiff. Um, I wanted to use like a linear rail, but that stuff is so expensive that it just didn't make sense for this project. So. Well, I'm going to give this stuff a try and see if it's stiff enough for uh, what I want to use it for. They sell it with these little sliding lockable carriages that have a uh, four-hole bolt pattern on them for attaching kind of whatever you want. And you'll, you'll see it here at the end of the video. I'm going to kind of slide it on the rail in order to test it. And um, yeah, the little lock and everything is just really simple and easy to use and it seems like it's going to be plenty stiff enough. I've just recently come into uh, possession of some of these uh, fireball tool um, weld angles and they've just completely cha changed my life. I just wish I would have owned some a long time ago. It's just so much easier to square up tubing and stuff like this using these angles and um, I think these are kind of some of the smaller ones that you can purchase. Uh, they are cast iron and um, it is amazing how well they repel uh, weld spatter as well. Nothing really seems to stick to them, which is great. And um, they've stayed super clean uh, the entire time I've had them. And um, just recently, we're, we're making a video out of what we've done to these weld tables. You can kind of see the current 
uh, state of them when I was welding on this is just a random set of little holes in them. They are unbelievably flat. They're actually machine flat. Um, and when we do these uh, videos on these tables, I'll kind of tell you how I came into possession of them. But um, super fortunate to have it. And now with the upgrades we've made to the table and having things like these fireball squares, it's just really made fabrication a breeze. Here I'm using um, some screenshots that I've taken from my design and uh, I just use Dropbox and put them on Dropbox and then I can open up those files on my phone and use them for laying out material and stuff so I don't have to bring my laptop down to the shop when I'm fabricating. I've, I found that's a pretty quick way to um, destroy a laptop, especially speakers and stuff. The grind dust just sticks to all the magnets. Something fierce, so it's, uh, it's nice to be able to reference some design drawings without actually having to have my laptop in the shop. The plate uh, that I'm using is half inch thick and I do like to drill and tap the holes for all the casters. I, I just, for whatever reason, I'm kind of opposed to welding them on. I, it just makes it so hard to remove in the future if you really wanted to remove the caster. And then welding the caster to the plate also just heats up all the grease and bearings and everything else. So I've uh, usually been pretty opposed to just welding casters on and usually go through the effort of bolting them on for just ease of removal. The rest of the stand's just made out of uh, two inch tubing and inch and a half tubing. So you can kind of see the size difference. The cross supports are inch and a half and like the longer sections and the legs are all two inch. Um, I really started liking this like step down when I build a bench like this, I build the legs usually out of the biggest material and then I step it down to like the next size when I do the main cross supports and then step it down again when I do the smaller cross supports and it just leaves room for really nice welds everywhere on the frame. All the welding on this just was so fluid it just so happened to work out like because these cross supports that I'm welding now are smaller than the tubes are attached to when I flip the bench over they're gapped away from my weld table about a half an inch so I have plenty of room to run all those welds in the vertical without damaging my bench which uh, I really do not like when people weld on these really nice benches that I have so and I really don't like it when it's me that ends up welding on one of them by accident um, even the height of this just worked out so well how when it's propped up on my weld bench it's just off the ground just far enough that I can still reach everything and kind of slide it around to access all the welds. You'll notice I don't do any welding on the top. It's just kind of eases the pain of having to grind any of those welds to get the top plate to sit flat on all the tube. And um, anybody that knows me as I'm really opposed to having to grind if I don't have to. So. On something like this, it's just not going to make a difference in the strength of the overall stand um, for what it's going to be used for. So I don't put any welds on the top, just out of probably laziness <laughs> would be the easiest way to describe it. I'm just realizing now that these small benches really mimic the assembly process that was used on the big weld benches. Um, that was completely unintentional, but um, those weld benches, they have a inch thick top on them and the tubing is three inch and it's a quarter inch thick wall so it is uh, far more stout than uh, anything I could ever fab in this shop. Um, the wheels that I have on it would probably let me maybe put a little over 1500 pounds on top of that table but if the table was sitting on the ground I think you could put the entire shop on top of those tables so they're uh, way more than I need, but I absolutely love having them around. I don't know if um, I've shown it in the background yet, but I actually have two of those tables in the shop and um, they have leveling bolts on them as well. And the rare occasion that we're welding something big enough that needs to be really flat or restrained really well, we can actually level the two tables with each other and actually have a really nice flat surface to weld big components together. Um, some hand railing too. You can actually see some partially finished hand railing in the shot in the background. So that's was a case where we used both of them to uh, level that out and get all that railing put together. These casters were 
another McMaster car purchase, um, just like most all the other hardware that I use on this, it comes from McMaster car. Um, and in the background, you can see uh, my current bench setup or the <laughs> bench setup that existed before I welded these up was just some old wooden benches. I actually used to use those wooden benches as a in-feed, out-feed table for a portable uh, table saw that I had. And here's why I try and keep everything in the shop on rollers. This table saw is just amazing. It comes with a set of rollers built into it that are on uh, like a hydraulic lift. So you can pump that handle and uh, lift the table saw up and move it. And then everything else in here has got rollers on it as well. And, um, I'm about ready to use a big kind of rolling gantry. It was a Harbor Freight purchase, and it really uh, makes it difficult to move if there's any like small rocks or things on the floor that might get under the wheels. So I always clean up really well before I use it just so that it rolls a heck of a lot easier. They're also not fun to use by yourself. It just requires a lot of kind of shuffling around. But I was doing this project on a weekend, so there wasn't anybody else in the shop uh, to help me out. And um, here's another problem <laughs> when you're working by yourself is um, I use a magnets to lift those sheets. That's quarter inch plate, but there's three of them stacked there. And of course the magnets were strong enough to lift all three of them at once. And so I had to get them separated and um, I use these uh, suction cups all the time when I'm moving various things and they're one of the handiest things to have in the shop. So I use the suction cups to separate <laughs> these sheets of steel out to individuals so I could pick them up again with the magnets just to get them on the plasma table. I've had this uh, Lincoln plasma table now for probably three years and it's it's a 4800 and it'll cut uh, full four by eight sheet of steel and um, it's pretty good. The uh, It comes fully assembled and what's really neat about it is a from the time you get it off the truck and get it uh, the shrink wrap and the crating and everything off it, it, it you know, and filled with water, it's, it's pretty much ready to cut within about 20 minutes. And um, just saves on all the assembly time. And it seems really well thought out. And uh, it's worked great for me over the years. It, it's capable, it's got an 80 amp plasma cutter attached to it. So it's capable of three quarter inch cuts if you really wanted to. Um, and I keep, I don't know if I showed it there, but I do keep a cover on it uh, a lot of the time because it's, we definitely don't use it in like a production setting. So it will sit off and on, not in use. And I throw a tarp over the cut bed just to stop all the wood shop dust. And if we're fabricating in solid surface or something like that from all the junk from getting a table, it also stops the evaporation um, loss of water. So if you cover it, uh, your water won't sit there and evaporate all the time. And here I'm just using it to rip these sheets in half and there's a really cool function on it where you can zero the plasma cutter on one end, guide it to the other end where you want your cut to finish, and then tell it to go between the two points. And so you don't actually have to program in CAD or CAM for any of this. It can all be done directly on the machine. And um, this is just that quarter inch for the top of the benches that I'm building. This plasma cutter uh, works out really good in this shop because I have just the right size air compressor to run it. They take a ton of air to run and the air compressor I have will just keep up with it. And um, also there's where we put it, there was a, a nice short run with uh, some dedicated power, a nice dedicated circuit for it. So it worked out really well when we set it. The only thing I don't like about plasma cutting in general is just having to deal with the water and the mess. So your parts <laughs> come off soaked in water. And you always got to dry them off or clean them up or something so they don't rust. And then you do have the slag as well, which is just always something you have to deal with and remove. Um, this is why I was saying the bench has just worked out so well for height. I was just able to flip that over and scoot it right off the table onto its wheels. and It just doesn't always seem to go like that. So it was nice that uh, something worked out so well this go around. And, um, when I put this top on here, uh, I clean it up a little bit with the grinder. but uh, And when I weld it onto the table, I don't 
really over welded. I think there's just maybe four or six little short welds that I weld this top on with. And I didn't want to make it incredibly difficult to remove um, down the road if I wanted to remove it. And it's just really not going to add a bunch of strength to this table. And it just doesn't really need it. So when you see me weld it, I don't think I really, I might not even show it, but there's just like four or six welds that hold it on the top. You can pretty much see the finished product here. As far as the bench is concerned, it's pretty simple. I made a mistake here too. I should have welded this piece of angle iron on when the bench was flipped on its top. And, um, but the fire malt two squares came in clutch here. I, I just used them to, uh, to support it while I kind of got everything squared away and it, it wasn't too bad, but certainly would have been a lot easier if uh, I had just done it while it was still sitting on my weld bench. <laughs> um, and again here, it's just a few welds. This thing really doesn't need to be um, crazy welded. So just trying to get it stiff. And then every weld I put on the front face of this, I'll have to grind because it needs to sit really, really flush for the carriage that's going to slide back and forth on that extruded aluminum. I guess it's kind of important to note. I mean, we we had to build two of these benches at the end of the day. So it's, it's kind of going to be, um, the finished product will be two of these benches in between them will sit two metal cutting saws. One is um, an evolution saw that looks kind of more like a traditional compound like wood miter saw. And then the other one's that dry cut uh, DeWalt saw that you saw earlier in the video. And um, I really like the evolution saw for its ability to do like quick miters on thin tube. And then um, the DeWalt saw is just great for cutting heavier material. And if it gets any heavier than that, I do have a, a jet band saw. You probably haven't seen it in this video, but it's a 10 inch jaw, like jet uh, fluid cutting saw. So we use it for cutting all the really heavy material that we need. Um, just getting this extruded aluminum mounted here, it's just using some quarter 20 bolts is all. And uh, I think here in a second, you'll see the carriage that I'm going to slide on the end. Then the second part, we'll be building all the roller stands and the supports for the uh, saws, which are going to be wall mounted. So the saws will kind of be mounted on the wall and they'll have some drawer slides and the ability to slide in and out to access the rollers that I'm putting on the front of this bench. And here's another McMaster car purchase is this uh, leveling foot. And if you don't put a leveling foot on like this, when the bolt touches the ground and you're trying to drive it down, it's going to move the bench all over the place. But um, you put this foot on there, it's got a little bearing in it and uh, kind of allows the bolt to turn without moving the bench. So I think you'll kind of see it when I drive it down to the floor. Well, we're about ready to wrap up this video. Um, please like this video and subscribe and feel free to ask any questions in the comments. And we'll see you in part two.